In this video, I'm going to show you nine record box settings that you need to change that will help you the most with your DJing. Let's get into it. All right, so what I'm going to do here is go to the top right hand corner of record box and open up the settings. And it's just this cog wheel just here at the top right. This will open up your record box settings, also known as preferences. Now, what I'm going to do right now is reset all of my record box settings back to default. So I'm going to start right at the start here in view, go down to reset to default and just click reset. Let's try the layout reset to default. Color, I'm going to go through all these. And already you can see my record box is reverting back to its default settings right now. I'm going to go through all the settings, do exactly the same, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so there we have it. I've gone through each individual setting on the left here and reset them all back to the default settings. Now, the reason why I've done that is so now I do actually have to go through and change the settings back that are most important to me and that I actually need to use whilst I am DJing. Now, if you're wondering why should you listen to me and follow my settings or at least take them into consideration, I have been DJing now for over 15 years in venues all around the world, including places such as clubs, bars, boat parties, pool parties, and festivals. I have also been creating online courses for the last seven years. And in that time, I have taught over 20,000 people how to DJ. And right now, I'm gonna show you the nine most important settings that you need to change in your record box. Now, the first thing that I recommend changing is the setting called tooltips. So if you go to the, one of the first options here, which says view, and then go to display type, the second option down here is tooltips. Now as standard record box turns this on. What tooltips does is it basically allows you to see what a function does just by holding the mouse cursor over the top. So if I hold my mouse cursor here over the play and pause button, it will basically come up in a box next to it explaining what that function does. I do exactly the same with the Q button here, which has a bit more of a description, it's a bit more complicated. It'll do the same with the loops. And it'll also do the same with the BPM counters here in the middle and basically anything that you'll hover your mouse cursor over. Now this is great if you're first starting out and you're unsure of what some functions do, or if you forget in the future you can turn it on, but for me personally, I like to turn this off. This is just because it can get in the way when you're moving your mouse cursor around when you're DJing, and it can be quite distracting, but it is an option there for you. Now the second thing that I like to change from standard is the font size in my music library. So again, just from here in view, display type, Below two tips, the next thing is browse. And from here, we can change the font size. Now, as you can probably see in my music library, the text is very small. This for me is just very difficult to be able to see when DJing live, and it's not that practical. So from here, we can use this slider. So I'll just move it across actually so you can see a bit better. I'm just gonna use this slider on the font size just to make it a little bit bigger. And it's up to your preferences to what size you want your track titles to be. You can also put this to bold so it just makes it a little bit easier to see and change the space in between the lines to a little bit more like that or down. But that's probably similar to what I would have it when I DJ live. Then the next thing I'm going to change is the key display format. So I'm going to scroll down here till I get to key display format. So it's in the same place as view, display type, and there is a few options here that we need to change. And as standard, this will be set to classic. I would recommend changing this to alphanumeric. And basically what that means is when you analyze your tracks for the key, it will give it a number and a letter combo. So just like on the right hand side here, you can see the keys of my track and the top one there is 12A, the next one below is 4B, the next one below that is 2A. And this system is a lot easier to use when you are trying to mix in key. I do have a full video explaining how you can mix in key using record box that you can check out after this video. The next setting I would recommend changing is in view but then layout. So this is in the layout of your record box. And it's this first option here, which is media browser. Now by default, most of these are selected. Basically what these are, these are the options you can view in your library over on the left-hand side here. You see all these square boxes with icons in, this is your media browser. So for example, this orange one here in the middle is the SoundCloud option. Now if I was to deselect SoundCloud, you'll see that disappear. So the orange box is now gone. For me personally, I only use two of these, which is Beatport and Beat Source, because I'm connected to the streaming softwares on them. So I deselect pretty much everything else as I don't use it. But this is up to your personal preference. But I would recommend deselecting anything that you do not use. You can always add it back in in the future. But for me, it's just everything off apart from Beatport and Beat Source. And that just tidies up my options over here on the left hand side. 
As well as that, I would just remove this Q analysis playlist as I don't necessarily need it. And it just frees up this little part of your library here at the bottom. So I'll just turn it back on. You'll see it appear. Just turn that off as well. And also playlist palette. I don't particularly use that. For me personally, with my record box, I try and keep it as minimal and as simple as possible while still being effective. Anything that I don't need, I'll simply get rid of until I do need it, then I'll add it back in. But with this option here, display queue markers, I do like that. As you can see on the waveforms here on the preview, if I take them off, you cannot see the hot cues on your waveforms. And for me, that is useful. It is something that is good to have so I can see where my hot cues are on my tracks or if the track does have any hot cues on. With these options here on the left hand side, 99% of the time I spend my time in the playlist window here. So I don't go into the collections one or even this sampler option. It's mainly in the playlist option. Now, if you are unsure what these are on the left hand side, like I've shown you previously in this video, you just go to settings, show tool tips, turn that on for a moment, go back and just hover over it and it'll tell you exactly what it is. Now, the next thing that we're going to change is our tracks waveform colors. So now we're going to view Instead of layout, we move across now, this time to color. And the second option down is our waveform color. There's three different options. There's blue, RGB, which stands for red, green, and blue, and then three band. As standard, it will set it as three band. For me personally, I use RGB. And you can see now the colors changing back to what they were before. Let's just move this out of the way. In a red, green, and blue waveform color. Now I have done a whole video on why I choose RGB over the other two. I go into detail of why this is more beneficial and how you can use it to help you with your DJing. So if you do want to watch that after this video, feel free to check it out. Just also off the back of that waveform color as well, if we go back to view, display type, and then scroll down, we now have the option to change the full preview waveform. Now as standard, it's set to half waveform, so you can see just a half the waveform here. But if I change it to full, it goes into full waveform. I personally prefer full waveform, but again, that's up to you and your preference. So the next setting we're going to look at is our track analysis. So to get to this, we need to go to the left hand side to analysis, then track analysis at the top. And the main setting that we need to change here is just this key option. So in the track analysis setting, we have BPM and grid automatically selected, which is good. That's what we want. That means that when our tracks are analyzed, it will get the tracks BPM and set a beep grid on it. But without selecting this option here, it won't get the key. So we want the key of the track. Now with this option below here, phrase, I personally leave this deselected. Now I have done a full video on how to use this phrase option for your track analysis, how it works, how you can correct it and make it work for you with your DJing. But I've also included the reasons why I personally wouldn't do it and the methods that I use instead. So it might be worth checking that out as well if you are curious about the phrase analysis. Now the next settings that we're going to change are the quantize settings. So to get there, we need to go to controller on the left hand side and then to others. From here now, it'll open up the quantize settings. And the main thing that we need to change here is we want to set all these values to one slash one. As standard, the hot cue value and the sequence of value are set to one slash four, which is basically a quarter of a beat. Now it's not too much of an issue with the sequencer. It's mainly just to do with the hot cue setting. So from here, I'm just gonna click the drop down and go to one slash one. And same with the bottom one as well, just to keep them all the same. Basically, what this means is that when we use the quantize setting, everything will snap in time with the actual beat grid to the beat. So if you were to press your hot cues or your loops, or even your play button when you have beat sync selected, it will snap to the actual beat grid. Whereas if you have this at a quarter or even a half, when you use your hot cue, it'll snap to a quarter of the beat. So it might be out of time and make your mixing and your transitions sound bad. I will be doing a full video on how to use quantize effectively and the best ways to use that. But for now, it's best just to turn all these to one slash one. If you want to give it a try, put your hot cue one onto a smaller value like one slash four or even one sixteenth like this, and then try using your hot cues and just listen to how they go out of time. So for this, make sure they're all at one beat, which is one slash one. The next setting we're going to look at are our keyboard shortcuts. So from here on the left hand side, you just need to click the keyboard option. And from here, you can change all your keyboard shortcuts. What that basically means is you can assign functions on Rekordbox to your keys on your laptop. This can make your workflow a lot easier and a lot faster. Now it's up to you which keyboard shortcuts you create. I just wanted to show you the option of being able to do this because it can really help with your workflow 
especially when you're planning and preparing tracks at home before you do your DJ sets. So for example, let's say this track on the right here, if I'm just planning and preparing this track and I'm not using my DJ controller, I just have my laptop at home, I can press play, pause, cue, and practice some mixes with these tracks. So I can use my mouse cursor to click here, press play, and press play on this side as well. Now that is very fiddly to do just clicking your mouse cursor. So what we can do is create keyboard shortcuts to help us with this. So for example, let's go into back into settings and I'm going to go on to deck one first and play and pause. I'm just gonna click this plus icon on the right hand side and it says new key mapping. Please put in a key combination now. So then you can press any key on your laptop and it will assign the play and pause button to that key. So I'm just gonna do it to the letter A for now. Click OK, and then same with Q. I'm just gonna add the actual letter Q. Let's go to deck two, play and pause. Let's click add. I'm going to do the letter L, and then for Q, at this time I'm going to do the letter O. There's reasons why I'm doing them letters, right? But I'm not going to go into them right now. I will be doing another video showing you all of my keyboard shortcuts and how I've used them. Now, if you don't want to wait for that, I do also go into a lot of detail about all my record box settings, how to set your keyboard shortcuts to help you with your DJing in my online DJ courses as well. I don't hold anything back. I show you everything from start to finish on how you can DJ and do professional sounding mixes. So if you are interested in that, check out the link below this video. So now we've gone ahead and assigned them keys. Instead of me clicking these buttons here, I can just do it with my keyboard shortcuts. So right now I am just pressing the keys on my laptop. Now that is very simple, but you can do that with pretty much anything. One of the main things I do this for is beat jump. So I like jumping through my tracks nice and fast. So now instead of going into beat jump on the right hand side here and clicking through the track and then having to go back to hot cue and set my hot cues, I have keyboard shortcuts set up like this. And you can see this track jumping through now, go forwards and backwards really quick. And you can see that they land right at these key points of the track. So I can jump through, really easy with my keyboard shortcuts. Now the last setting that we're going to look at is the stems options. So from here now you need to go to extensions right at the bottom of this list on the left and go to stems. Now one thing I would recommend is turning stems function off if you are not using it. It can use up a lot of CPU and computer power and if you're not using it, it's just unnecessary. All you need to do to activate though is just select this button here. It will eject the tracks that are already on the deck, so make sure you're not playing live when you do this. Click yes. And what you'll see now are these three options on either side, drums, vocals, and instruments. Now I do have a full video on how you can set up stems to DJ with and how you can set them up on your DJ controller as well. And it goes through all the different settings on how you can set it up to DJ effectively. I also have a video on stems on showing you the best way to use it when DJing live. So feel free to check out them two videos after this if you do want to learn how to use stems and how to set it up on a DJ controller. But for now, just quickly moving on, the next option down is to prioritize for sound quality or to prioritize for speed. And it is basically exactly what it says. If you want better sound quality, but it's going to take longer to do and take up more computer power, select the first option. But if you want to prioritize for speed and for it to be active a little bit faster, you just need to select this option here. So there you have it. Those are the nine settings that you should change in your Rekordbox DJ software. They will help you the most with your DJing. If you do want to learn more about DJing, check out those videos that I've recommended throughout this video. Or you can simply just watch this video that's been recommended here as YouTube thinks you might like this and you might learn some more from it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again. Bye for now.